welcome along to today's video and we're going to be showing you how to fit an external microphone to the ever popular SJ4000 action camera which is very similar to the GoPros. The camera doesn't come with an external microphone as standard only comes with the little built-in one which is the size of this little pinprick thing next to the wire snips and the quality of it isn't very good at all it's absolutely abysmal and as you can see just above where the USB ports are and the memory slot three small holes of the side of a camera and that is where the audio is supposed to enter the camera for the internal microphone to pick it up but it doesn't work very well at all so we'll fit an external microphone port and hopefully you'll be able to do this too as it shouldn't take you that long at all so first with our SJ cams we need to dismantle it and that's very easy this is a, a brand new one it's um, pretty much straight out of the pack it's been tested to make sure it all works and it works fine and the audio is abysmal even though it's new so to dismantle very easy take the battery cover off just get it to one side remove the battery remove the memory card if fitted and then we're going to need to pop off the front cover and it's very easy to do where the battery hole is just gently lever it off and it'll all come off in one sitting and that exposes the board cover so to protect the lens put a bit of black tape on it because we don't want that getting scratched or any other colour tape you've got and then we're going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws from the body which will allow us to remove the front cover Once we've removed all the screws, then we're going to have to unsolder the power switch board, or alternatively, if you wish, you can lever it off the cover by gently breaking the plastic welds, and that'll allow you to move it to one side. Next, we need to turn over, and we need to remove the black fascia on the back and to do that remove any brand new protective strips you need a very sharp Stanley blade and you need to lever very gently in a corner and lift it up and remove it so once you get your Stanley blade under it very gently remove it and it'll pop off with all the glue still attached to the back Put that to one side facing upwards so all the glue is not sticking to the table. Then we need to remove the screen. Very easy, move your standard lid again. Gently lever it out of the housing. And allow it to flip out then underneath the screen where the ribbon cable is your screwdriver gently lever it up the plastic clip slide the ribbon cable out and remove the screen next part of the dismantling is to remove the top cover so now you've removed all the screws he says then you can lift up the plastic and move it out to one side and this allows us to remove the entire PCB assembly from the housing so from the rear you want to push very gently at the side where the options buttons are and this will allow the PCB to be removed from the body as such 
and the part which we wish to remove is this little microphone here, small condenser microphone, which isn't brilliant at all. So to do that we need to turn it over and use our soldering iron to remove a solder from these two pins which will then allow the microphone to drop outwards. If you've got a little desk vise, it makes this job so much easier. Gently clamp the PCB in the desk vise. Then use your soldering iron to heat up the two pins, which will free the microphone. And that has removed the microphone from the circuit board and it's only about five or six millimeters in diameter two millimeters deep it's not going to pick up a lot of good quality audio at all so on these pins next we need to attach two small wires so before we attach wires we turn the circuit board back over to make the job easier and you'll see on the circuit board where the microphone previously was there's a little positive and a negative for the microphone doesn't matter which colour wire you use if you've got red for positive then it's more convenient then use your fine soldering iron to attach the wire through the pin hole do that for both wires Make sure that the electrical connection is good as well as the mechanical connection. And once you've done that we can turn the circuit board over and then trim off the excess with our wire clippers. Ensure that your soldering is nice and neat and that the wire connections aren't touching and that the insulation goes all the way down to the circuit board. Then once we've done that, that's the circuit board prepared, ready for the next stage. Now we need to drill out our case to accept a microphone socket jack. I'm using a mono 3.5mm jack, you can use a stereo one if you so wish, or you can use a 2.5mm one if you wish to go down the micro jack route. Using a step drill very gently choose your location then drill it out being careful not to drill too much in one go as we only want to take out up to approximately 9.30 seconds of an inch or around about 8 millimeters in metric. This will then allow you to fit in the microphone jack to the body of the camera as such. Now the jack is fitted into the body making sure that where you've fitted it allows you to get the PCB back in, the lens which will sit there and also ensure that you can get the top cover back on. This will be entirely dependent on what type of 3.5mm jack you buy as to whereabouts you can fit it. Some are slimmer than others and some are bigger than others. Once you've done that you'll need to pin up, tin up the solder tags on the rear of it when we refit this PCB. Taking care not to overheat the solder tag terminals as you don't want to be melting the plastic housing. And likewise when you solder into the PCB you don't want to be melting any of the components neither. Once you've done that you can then bend over tag so 
you get access to them both with plenty of clearance. To refit the PCB, super easy. Simply slide in the circuit board underneath your new microphone jack. Then press it firmly home. And that is the microphone jack in place inside the housing and access is the same side as all the rest of the sockets. Then you will need to solder up the wires in corresponding positive and negative. Once you've soldered everything back up we can then start put the camera back together. So remove the tape from the lens and refit the front cover taking into account that you don't snag or damage the wiring for the power switch then reinsert all the screws. Now all the screws have been refitted, you can put the front look back on. Simply case of pressing it and clicking it back in. Pop your bit of tape back over the lens and then we're going to refit the screen to the rear. Simply slide the ribbon cable back into the housing on the rear. It's a bit fiddly, but uh, once you've got it started, it's very easy. And once the ribbon cable's back in, push back down on the grey clip that you lifted up earlier to lock in the cable. Then simply pop the screen back in place. Wipe off any fingerprints, then reapply the... glossy rear cover. Make sure that there's no dust on the inside. Make sure you put the cover on the correct way. Two little clear parts correspond to the LED ports on the side. Simply pop on, press down and that is your SJ camera back together with a external microphone port so you can put your microphone anywhere which is especially handy for those of us who you like to use them on track days so we can put the microphone somewhere where it's not going to be affected by wind noise thanks for watching and hopefully we'll be back soon with some more M5 how to videos and this time we'll be upgrading the rear subframe bushes with polyurethane inserts from Powerflex. So keep tuned for that and thank you again.